Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing the supply chain management at Caterpillar Incorporated. I'm Brent Miller and my team members are Ryan Burke and Regan McDonald. We're going to start out with an introduction and a brief history of Caterpillar, as well as a general overview of their supply chain. Caterpillar has its headquarters in Peoria, Illinois, and is responsible for manufacturing, construction and mining equipment, engines, and turbines. In addition, Caterpillar also provides financing, insurance, and leasing options to customers. Founded in 1925 in California, Caterpillar was originally responsible for lumber and wagon parts. It is currently traded on the New York Stock Exchange and has remained an American company for 80 years, despite having over 70% of its revenues coming from foreign countries. Caterpillar is famous for its yellow livery and the cat logo, and is also famous for pulling the first plane to make the trans Pacific flight from America, the Southern Cross. Caterpillar employs almost 70,000 individuals worldwide. Caterpillar has manufacturing facilities in 21 countries and marketing headquarters in 11 countries. The distribution network spans over 19 countries. Caterpillar has business lines including machinery like excavators, loaders, dump trucks, engines, on-road trucks, agricultural products, electronics, and a defense product segment. Caterpillar is organized by a dealer network. There are over 180 dealerships worldwide. These dealers not only sell the products, but they provide support and parts for the products. If one of these machines is to break down, it is crucial to many businesses that they get their, their machinery up and running as fast as possible, so dealers must keep an inventory of parts necessary to do this as fast as possible. Caterpillar is ranked number one in its industry and 44th overall in the Fortune 500. However, it does find competition from Illinois-based John Deere, Japanese-based Komatsu, J.C. Bamford Excavators out of Great Britain, CNH International, a holding company for an Italian agricultural and industrial product company, and Joy Mining out of Pennsylvania. Caterpillar Logistics Services Incorporated was created in order to handle the global supply chain management of its parent company, Caterpillar. It became the sixth largest North American 3PL, and over 50% of its business came from Caterpillar. In 2012, Caterpillar Logistics became Neovia after Platinum Equity Group acquired a 65% stake in the company. At the time, Caterpillar owned the remaining 35%. However, recently, in October of 2014, a Goldman Sachs affiliate and Roan Capital purchased the entire company for about a billion dollars. This has been a part of a wave of industrial logistic company takeovers and acquisitions over the last several years. In the current Caterpillar supply chain, there are about 2,500 employees handling the distribution, warehousing and storage, inventory management, information systems, transportation management, manufacturing logistics, packaging, order, order management, and business support for all of its products. Over 180 million orders are completed annually by Caterpillar with shipments of 16 billion pounds of products. Caterpillar is expecting further increase in these numbers. Caterpillar customers look at several criteria when deciding whether to purchase this product or competitors. These mainly boil down to availability, quality, and cost. You may notice that availability is number one. This is because the customers that purchase these products want them now or as soon as possible. Wait times or delays are not something that their, their customers want to see. Quality has always been a, something that CAT is well known for and this will continue into the future. However, cost seems to be a little high when compared to competitors. Hi, my name is Ryan Burke and I will be presenting over the next few slides. Um, this slide shows where the overall supplies for Caterpillar's products are coming from. As you can clearly see, uh, most of the products are coming from North America. Caterpillar, as you know, is a U.S.-based company. 
and they base most of their manufacturing um, within the United States. And they do this because according um, to a Bloomberg report when they visited a Caterpillar facility, the Caterpillar um, employee said that Caterpillar overall values the productivity of, it wor of its workers, and they understand that you know, outsourcing, while it may reduce labor costs, doesn't necessarily guarantee the same productivity that can be garnered when in a higher um, labor market. So overall, they've decided to always continue to use uh, manufacturing plants within the United States or North America due to the overall productivity of um, the m labor market um, and their employees, as well as understanding that the transportation costs and understanding that you know if most of the supply is coming from North America um, it's much cheaper to keep the manufacturing facilities within North America rather than outsource them where the products would then need to be transported to the outsourced um, market and then being brought back into North America since a majority of Caterpillar sales are within um, the United States, Canada, or Mexico. This page lists um, the supply chain technologies that exist um, within Caterpillar. Um, some of these were created by Caterpillar's Logistics Services, which is um, no longer a part of the company or other third-party um, companies. They have focused on looking at inefficiencies and then driving out these inefficiencies. Um, the advanced transportation modeling allows Caterpillar to look at the best ways to transport products or materials supplies um, at the lowest cost while still meeting or beating the expectations of the consumer. Um, all of these technologies are programs established to promote an efficient flow in the supply chain. Um, so overall looking to make sure that the flow from one air of the supply chain to the next um, is continue at the same rate or increasing um, without increasing in cost. They also like to look at the historical and forecasted data um, in determining um, customers needs. From there, the programs design layouts and processes that meet the requirements of the customers and Caterpillar. Many of these tools used at Caterpillar have gone on to be used by other firms who have utilized on um, Caterpillar's logistics services. Um, another technology tool being used at Caterpillar that's not on this slide is the i2 system, which is an internet system that's um, a virtual um, storefront, online storefront. It allows for both Caterpillar dealers, um, independent dealers, and customers to interact and, under, um, and give Caterpillar and the dealers an understanding of what the customer wants and needs. Overall, Caterpillar is hoping that this system will reduce their costs in other areas and will allow them to um, establish an e-business, an e-commerce business, and overall make them an industry leader in that area. They're hoping that it will also allow them from, to go from a build-to-stock company to an order-to-delivery company, whereas they're no longer building um, or manufacturing products just to stock up on, but rather manufacturing um, products because customers are um, purchasing those products. Currently, they don't have the system operating in tandem with the factories, but their hope is um, that they would soon be able to link um, these, this I2 system to the factory, which then would allow for the um, order to vision method to occur. Caterpillar's growth um, can be characterized in the 2000s as doing extremely well, um, even though we had the recession in 08 and 09. Um, it was able to come out of the recession in 11. Um, with relatively great sales growth and um, operating income. Um, overall, they're expecting the demand to double in size by 2020, and currently the supply chain isn't, would not be able to um, provide for this increase, so they're currently um, looking at ways to um, handle this new um, demand that should incur from emerging markets such as China, India, or South America, and the overall um, markets in Europe and the United States. So overall, they want to continue to look at ways to continue this growth by
by keeping their customers loyal, meeting the customer's satisfaction, and always providing a product that is high quality, which Caterpillar is always known to do well. Caterpillar's supply chain success um, can be attributed not only to the Caterpillar logistics services and many of the programs or um, technologies they've come up with, but also with their implementation of the Six Sigma, which is overall looking at reducing waste within um, processes such as getting rid of um, defective parts so that you no longer have as many defective parts. Um, they also define some of their best practices with um, distribution, transportation, and inventory management. Distribution-wise, um, back in the 80s when they kind of fell into a slump, they got together with their um, independent distributors and started to create more of a relationship with them and understanding that the distribution centers um, or these independent dealers really connected um, with the customers that were buying Caterpillar products and by talking with the dealers they were able to get a sense, better sense and understanding of the customer and the customer's demands and needs so they continue to work on this um, this distribution relationship with the independent dealers. Um, transportation wise they're always looking to cut costs um, understanding that these are big normally the equipment they're selling are huge equipment that require um, lots of time to transport um, so they're always looking at ways to decrease the cost of transportation and inventory management wise um, this idea of going from a build to stock to a uh, um, make to order is definitely something that they're trying to follow through with and um, would help them better manage inventory because they would not have inventory that they necessarily um, did not need. This slide shows um, Caterpillar's resource planning model. As you can clearly see, um, there's a lot of communication that has to go back between um, multiple different departments um, within the supply chain. First off, they kind of take into account the strategic plans and the marketing forecasts um, of the company, as well as customer feedback. And from there, they go to you know the sales and operation planning to then understanding what we can do capacity-wise to a, a mix planning of the products and then setting up the production of all these different products. products. And then from there, they understand where they need to um, get the materials to make these products from. And then they go to a detailed capacity planning for the hours um, needed to make all of these products. And then overall, it goes down to the um, production of them and then the overall purchasing of the products. The Caterpillar Production System, or CPS, was founded in 2005 as a, a way to focus on eliminating waste within the supply chain area. It focuses on three different areas, the operating system, the cultural system, and the management system. And overall, the operating system is to chase waste, which is to drive um, for continuous and relentless elimination of waste in all processes with priority on safety and quantity related waste. And it also focuses on pole, which is the use of pole replenishment to build only what is needed when it is needed. Again, that's kind of going towards a um, build to order system rather than a stock to order or build to stock. Um, it also goes to make flow, which is to simplify the processes um, to surface problems quickly and increase process efficiency. In other words, making the system much more simple so that you're able to eradicate problems and discover problems much, um, much faster. They also want to drive a standard work, which is to standardize the tasks and common processes for um, continuous improvement and they want to continue to validate their processes through technology and continuing to look at um, other ways to eradicate inefficiencies. Um, culturally, they want to put safety first, which is to build a safety first culture in the workforce of Caterpillar by always having safety as the highest priority. 
We also, of course, want to take the customer's view into account and make decisions based upon that view with accordance with the long-term structure of um, Caterpillar's strategy. They want to also see the first-hand um, processes and stop and fix the issues that occur within the culture. They also definitely want to develop people um, with a shortage in manufacturing in the United States with people qualified to do so. They want to be able to um, develop um, individuals that will be able to work in their system and understand their system for a long period of time rather than um, individuals that are more part-time and seasonal. And the management, they always want to actively listen to the, pro, um, to the workers and the customers and they want to align their targets with department targets and have this understanding between um, both of them and use the feedback from the departments and the customers to help drive processes. The Caterpillar production system overall goals is to accomplish the goals within the three different systems and then underneath those three different systems to accomplish those goals. And overall, it's supposed to eliminate all unused um, waste that doesn't add to the value of the products. Um, they also want to eliminate defects, the waiting periods, the overproduction, the excess motion, the overprocessing, and but still yet maintain customers' demands and the ability to create products on time and at the product level that is desired by Caterpillar customers. Um, they're going to be doing this by using the Six Sigma system, the many tools um, and programs that um, were developed by the Caterpillar Logistics Service Company before um, they were bought out by the PE firm. So overall, this CPS is the backbone of Caterpillar's supply chain management. Hi there, this is Reagan McDonnell. I'm going to be discussing some of the different ways that Caterpillar has been able to significantly improve their supply chain over the past several years. One important aspect of the supply chain that Caterpillar was able to improve on was their software management systems. In 2005, in a joint venture with both Ford and SAP, they were able to create a system that combined several necessary aspects of the supply chain into one. This system, coined Service Parts Management, or SPM, created an integrated solution for forecasting, demand planning, inventory management, and warehouse management into one complete system. By linking daily transportation and product handling software, they were able to completely support their global operations with this system. Caterpillar helped to revolutionize the industry and changed how others thought about their own software systems. Their service parts management wasn't the only way that Caterpillar was able to improve their supply chain. They created new sourcing strategies, more specifically value chain segmentation, in order to better respond to customer demand. Their new ordering lane system, which consisted of four ordering lanes that serve a variety of equipment models, including excavators and earth moving machinery, Caterpillar provided information to its dealers specifying what options are available in each lane. The first lane is a standard model with basic options, and then each subsequent lane offering a wider array of customization choices with different lead times. The segmentation of splitting up stock models and built-to-order models have resulted in them becoming more in tune with their customer values. This system had several positive outcomes, one of which being a more simple system with fewer interruptions. This strategy also resulted in the company taking the initiative to become more proactive and less reactive. It was in large part due to this new system that Caterpillar was able to earn a spot in Gardner Inc.'s top 10 industrial supply chains in 2010. One way to drastically improve supply chain is by lowering costs. In Caterpillar's case, lowering the transportation costs was a main focus. One way in which they did this was by improving their technology. Basically, the company built a control tower to better achieve end-to-end -end visibility throughout the shipping process. This allows the company to measure carrier lane performance 
as well as the variability associated with carrier's performance on specific lanes. By achieving a lower variability in shipping times, Caterpillar was also able to lower their need to carry access inventory. Another way in which they were able to lower their costs in transportation was by creating shipment hubs. This gave Caterpillar a better scale on a lane. This also allowed Caterpillar to pre-book ocean transportation capacities and allowed them to ship through the air from hub to hub. Increasing efficiency and eliminating inefficiencies are extremely vital to improving the supply chain. With the help of their new and improved software management techniques from their partnership with Ford and SAP, Caterpillar have been able to create a more efficient supply chain. With this new system in place, dealers now have complete inventory visibility throughout the system. With the help of Cat Logistics, Caterpillar has saved millions of dollars by reducing on-hand inventory from 10.4 months in 1989 to 5.5 months in 2005. Continuing with the data from 2005, they were still able to complete a system order fill rate of 99.7%. One important point that we have learned about in our Supply Chain 303 class is how the bullwhip effect can wreak havoc on a company's supply chain. In 2010, Caterpillar became extremely involved in monitoring the operations of suppliers to ensure that they can meet increased demand even in a slow economic recovery situation. They told suppliers that they would be increasing purchases regardless of sales in order to minimize the bullwhip effect, especially after they rapidly created a more lean inventory in 2008 and 2009. They frequently visited with key suppliers to ensure that they had the resources to quickly boost output if demand increased drastically. By investing heavily into supplier development and management, even during poor economic conditions, they sent a message to other competitive firms in their industry. It is worth noting also that Caterpillar agreed not to change order volumes for a period of three months under a freeze period in order to give suppliers greater ability to plan ahead, guaranteeing their partnership through at least the next three months. This slide kind of looks at Caterpillar's overall business outlook for the future. Um, currently, a lot of Caterpillar's um, sales comes from their energy and transportation division, and that is reflected in two-thirds of their operating profit. Currently, though, oil prices have plunged over the last few months, and experts continue to believe that it will con continue to stay at these record low levels um, considering the past few years have been much higher. This could have a negative impact on Caterpillar's business because oil companies would no longer then um, have high profit margins, so they wouldn't be able to necessarily go out and invest in Caterpillar products. Um, there's also worry that um, oil production may stop in certain areas, so there wouldn't be a need to purchase new Caterpillar products. This along with the fact that mining has definitely fallen extremely um, is a little concerning to Caterpillar as well as construction dropping off recently a little. Um, China, which they definitely have focused on a lot recently, um, has also started to slow down while it still has much higher growth than anywhere else in the world, um, has slowed down um, considerably and this could definitely have a negative impact on their their outlook for the future. Um, they have made some big acquisitions within the recent years though, especially in the mining area, which seems to be a bit troubling after mining has fallen a lot recently. Um, one was the purchase of a Wisconsin mining equipment manufacturer and the Chinese um, mining company, ERA Mining Machinery. Um, roughly they spent around nine billion um, within the past few years. Overall, though, supply chain-wise, um, if this Internet I2 system can work out and they can shift to a more um, build-to-order system rather than to a build-to-stock, um, that will definitely have a very positive impact on them. They'll be able to keep inventory and wasteful inventory down to 
probably record, le um, record low levels, um, as well as the implementation of the Six Sigma and the CPS um, as they continue to implement it more and um, it becomes more a part of the business, um, it should help increase um, their ability to cut costs while still um, outputting the same same levels or higher levels um, in the near future. Overall, I would like to thank you for listening to our presentation. Um, following this slide will be a list of our sources that we've used. Thank you again, and have a great holiday season.